Hey everybody! So recently I made some paper beads and was scrolling through Pinterest and I came across fabric beads and I'd never seen them before and I figured it was exactly the same process. These were ones that were being sold on Etsy so there was no tutorial. There's probably tutorials out there but this was just, I had a go at making some last night and I made this really cool, I don't know if you can, I might have to move my big journal, um, big dangle for the side of my journal with these fabric beads and then wrapped them in wire and added some little beads to them so they were a bit more like grungy almost like boho style fabric beads so I thought I've got another little journal cover that I'm working on and I wanted to make a tassel dangle for the side with some other fabric beads so I thought why not make a video and pop it up for anybody else who might want to give it a go I do hopefully I'm going to try to, because um, I do like videos that are easy and quick to the point. So I'm hoping that um, this will be one of those. But let's see how we go. So I made some this morning and they're already dry. So I'm only going to show you making of the bead once because it's the exact same process as making the paper beads, if you've made paper beads before. Um, I use a toothpick only because I find it easier or one of those skewers. And I use um, this Mod Podge. I like the matte Mod Podge. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of Mod Podge in there, like so. And I've got a paintbrush. And now, as you'd know with the paper beads, depending on the shape of your paper, or fabric in this case, um, will depend on the shape of your bead. So that one is hopefully going to come out looking like that. That one's a smaller version. This one was a bit more square because the fabric was a bit more square cut. So they're all, I'm not too fussed. These ones that I'd made last night, they were square, square or like rectangle pieces of fabric. So they're a bit more of a square bead. So when I do it, I like to use the paper clip and I always sort of fold it over. I'm hoping you can see this okay. I always fold it over roll it once before I start adding the glue so that it doesn't glue it onto the paper clip, oh, paper clip, the toothpick. And then I just start doing a bit of glue and roll. Now, as I said, you could be really particular and make sure that you get the perfect shape, but I'm not too fussed about that. So I figured it's going to look nice and grungy and homemade either way. So I just keep brushing the, the Mod Podge on top and rolling. Now depending on the thickness of your material, so the ones that I'd made last night, the material was actually really quite thick. It was like, I want to say curtain material. Now obviously I'm using just plain calico here because I just had a couple of plain calico strips. So they're nice. it's nice and boring, but we're going to jazz it up with the beads and some colored wire but yeah obviously if you use a um, like a fun patterned material then you're going to have fun patterned beads but because I'm putting wire and beads around it I wasn't too worried about So then I just, I don't worry about going around the whole bead for this one. With the paper ones I do, but for this one I'm not worried because I'm going to be wrapping it in wire anyway. So as long as that the end is sealed, and I just want to make sure that it moves on the paper. Oh, why do I keep calling the paper clip? Toothpick moves on the toothpick so it doesn't get stuck when it's dry. So that's got a bit of movement in there. And then I always just grab like a little container and just sit it on top of a little container just so it can dry. So that's how I make the actual fabric beads, exactly the same way as you would a paper bead. And so these ones I made this morning over breakfast, they don't take very long to dry. In fact, the ones I made last night, I'd made them and then went and did a live video for about an hour and I came back and they were ready to use. So they dried really fast. So I can keep the toothpicks for the next time. And then we've got some fabric beads. Now, you know, you could use any fabric. Obviously this one was a stretchy bit of leftover t-shirt. 
um, and this is the calico. So I saw some beads where they wrapped two lots of material, so it gave it a little bit of extra look. To, you know, again, it's personal preference. So actually what I might do is I might keep the toothpick. It might be easier when I'm wrapping the wire. So what I did last night was I wrapped the, the first one I did, I put the bead onto the wire, then tried to wrap it, and I just felt like I kept holding onto the the bead from falling out so then I ended up wrapping this bead and then putting all the beads together on the wire I don't even know what these ones are called but I really should know what these things are called these ones I've made myself just from some heavy gauge wire because I didn't have ones long enough I only had some short ones so once we get to that stage you'll need some wire or some ah oh, I can't think of the name of these things pin they've got the little um, circle on the bottom to stop your beads from falling off you'll need some wire cutters obviously and then I use some rounded pliers as well as flat pliers for when we're putting it all together so to do this I then use a thin wire so this one is a 28 gauge so I just used a really thin wire so that I could use really small beads so I really want to use these little beads on the outside of here so I found I've got some different colors and I thought the purple one would look nice because it might stand out a bit more so I don't measure anything so unfortunately if you are um, following along and you're one of those people that like a tutorial where everything is precisely measured that's not me I'm really sorry but <laughs> I really struggle to measure anything that's just not who I am. So all I was doing last night was I just started wrapping the wire and then I would grab a little bead and put a bead on like that and then just continue wrapping it. Now I've kept a little bit of the wire as a tail because I'm going to use that to dig it up inside the bead at the end to hold it in, in place. So again I kind of don't, um, I like the idea of it being rustic. It doesn't, if you want to keep your wire wrapping symmetrical, you can. I um, am not a fan of, well, not, not that I'm not a fan, but I think if I try to do anything too symmetrical, it wouldn't really work properly for me. So I just did it really rough. You could put as many of these little beads on as you want. I'm just going to go with three. Probably should have cut this bit a bit longer. Now, from here, you can either tuck the tail up into the bottom of the bead, or I might actually just twist it off with the other end of this thing. It's sitting right there. But last night, my wire ended right towards the end, so then I just shoved it down inside the bead. But this will work too. See, again, we just go with the flow. There's no right or wrong so I'm just going to twist those very unsuccessfully <laughs> okay yes that did twist so I'm just going to twist those a couple of times and then I'm going to snip that off and I'm just going to push it down onto the side of the bead so it's not sticking out jagged like so and so that's all I did for that so then all I did was grabbed <laughs> the longer ah oh, the name of this is killing me not knowing what the name of those drop pin drop pins no you'll know what I'm talking about anyway they're the wire um, strips with the little hole on the end so you can either just shred it straight on there I've got a few beads here that we can play around with let's see Try not to overthink it too much. Let's just go one, two, three, let's go for something shiny as well. Shiny. So then you just want to make sure what I found with my, with these ones last night, if you can see, because I had them more square, 
the end is quite wide so I needed a wide bead to stop it from and I think one of them actually has gone in uh, there it is so one of them's actually gone inside the top there a bit more than just sitting on the edge so you want to make sure that whatever bead you've got here before you put on your fabric bead it's bigger than the base of the fabric bead So we've got that. Then let's put something on the top. We should probably just do the same in reverse. So let's go a sparkly bead, a clear bead, clear bead, and a blue bead. So that's all I'm going to put on it. And then I'm just going to create the loop on the other end. So the loops are great. Like you can get these pins that have got like a flat bottom that stops your bead from coming off. And they're great if you don't want to hang anything off the bottom. But I like the doing it this style, A, because I can make my own length. And B, I can then add more stuff to the bottom of this and add a tassel if I want to add a tassel. So this is where we get our rounded pliers. And we just go around like so. And then we snip off the excess that hopefully doesn't go landing on the floor. There we go, like that. And then our flat pliers, we just squeeze that in place a bit better. So then we have our really cool, I don't know, boho, rustic, grungy, fabric, beady dangle ready to do something with. So I'm going to make, I'll make one more on here and then I will um, do the rest and come back and we'll make the dangle together. So let's put this back on here just so it's easier for me to wrap the wire. Oh, the inside of my bead didn't stick very well. Okay, maybe not that one. Let's try this one. Yeah. Okay, so should I go a gold? No, I think I'll stick to the purple. I like the purple. So depending on how much you want to wrap it will depend on how long you want to use this thinner wire. I might make it a bit longer this time and see if I can get some more wrapping on it. Okay. And the problem with is with a long wire, then you've got a longer thing to get your tiny little beads on. That's So once we've got, I think I cut this one just a bit too much longer than I should have, but that's okay. So let's give that a bit of a wrap. Yeah, keeping it on the toothpick stops me from having to hold such a tiny little bead. Which I quite like the idea of just twisting it off. So, Bring that around there. And twist off those ends. Give that a 
snip and then we can just flatten that against the side of our bead. Okay, so I'll make a couple more of these beads and we'll come back and I will we will make the dangle together so that you can see how I do the dangle as well. So that's the bead, fabric bead, and I'll be back to make the dangle. Okay, so we're back and I have made all the beads and I've even got a couple of little charms here ready to go to add to our dangle that's going to go on the side of this journal. Now I've actually got enough to do two dangles because I'm only going to make it small. So I might do the pink one. No, I think I might do the blue one on this book that I've got here. So these are the, the beads and I've just added, as you can see, you can add a little dangle to the bottom of each of that one there but the eye so these are eye pins I got um, my husband to google it while I was making the beads oh, what's the name of that thing eye pins so yes I've added a, a dangle to the bottom of this eye pin and also to this one here so I'll pop those ones aside for the moment and these are the other ones I made so these beads were actually all off a bracelet that I found at the second hand shop for like 50 cents so I thought oh they're nice beads they'll go well with that coloring so we're going to use those beads and I'm thinking I might use the camera as the dangle so I'm going to put that one aside for now to go with a different one and then bring over the cover so this is a cover that I just made yesterday it's just a small journal I'm going to stitch a signature in when I'm done I've just put an eyelet in there to hang our dangle off the side so this was some sewing that I'd done yesterday as a test run because I'd never done this type of sewing before um, and I quite like the way it came out I printed these pictures on some extra calico so I think those will look quite nice with this particular journal so I've done the eyelet so that we can hang our string off of it so I'm going to use the same string that I will stitch my signature in with, which I think is like an embroidery string. Now, because I've got four dangles, I only need two pieces. So I make it. Now, this is a dangle idea that I saw from the amazing lady from 49 Dragonflies. Um, and if you don't already, go and check her out because she's got a lot of amazing... Um, YouTube clips and I saw this particular dangle idea from her so so yeah depending on how many charms you want to hang or you know beads you want to hang off the side of your book will depend on how many pieces of string so I only need two strings because I've got four ends so all we're going to do is bring those together and we are going to let's see if I can remember how she did this so pop it through the eyelet like so and then thread that through the loop bringing that down like that and so then so it will end up cutting most of this off but the reason why you make it the length of your book is because then you can have your dangles at different heights so then we just want to go along and on each piece of string we just want to tie on the dangles making sure that they finish at different spots so being that's being the longest one let's do that one first so I want to make sure that it doesn't sit longer than the book so we might just do it about there and then we just do a double knot just do a double knot like so check that that's right there drop our scissors on the ground <laughs> nope don't drop your scissors on the ground and then just snip off the excess like so Okay, so then we can go the next dangle. I might want that one down a 
bit lower. So I might do that one to there. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my daughter trying to hum in the background upstairs. Having fun. She's listening to some music, I think. Okay, double knot, check it, and then snip it off. And then this one. You have that one come up taller. Our charm. I think I want the charm to go kind of in the middle, like there. Okay. Um, And on. Okay, snip that off. And then we can see, look at that, this really cool like dangle on the side of this book. So super easy. And then this also can be removed, obviously, and changed up. So you can undo this. So the one I made yesterday, so I'm just going to show you, put that to the side. So the one I made yesterday, I couldn't get my eyelet in the middle because I've got a signature right in the middle. I don't know if you can see it. There's a signature right in the middle of the book. So let's see if I can just bring this camera up a bit so it's not so close. Oop, there we go. Get up a little bit. Okay. So I end up doing two eyelets, which weren't even, but that's okay because I'm not really too fussed about evenness anymore. Um, and I, instead of threading it through like that, I just thread it both through the loops and then squeeze it together with one of those jewelry pinch things. And it's the same. So yeah, if you've got two eyelets, that's a really cool way of doing, being able to do it. So then I've got, in this one, I've got six dangles. So I've got four beads and two charms on this one. I couldn't not do a dragonfly because I love dragonflies. And then I also came across this bead that I found, I don't know if you can see that, it's like a little paintbrush and palette. Um, I found that in a whole heap of stuff that I was given for free. So yeah, that one's got two tassels. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that video process of making, giving fabric beads a go, wrapping them in some wire, and then creating a really cool dangle for the side of your journal. Some nice, fun, grungy, bohemian book jewellery. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Hopefully, I'll be able to do some more videos soon. This is all new to me, so making videos like this. I'm used to doing lives and not having to worry too much. But creating videos is a little bit more trickier. So I've got to think about it and make sure that there's no background noise, things like that. So hopefully, I'll be able to do some more. Thanks, everybody. Bye.